Hey everybody, my name is Brian, and today I'm going to be talking about a little language I've had a love-hate relationship over the past two years with called OCaml, and an implementation in JavaScript with a, a transpiler called BuckleScript. So, today uh, I'm just going to take you through a little high-level overview of OCaml. Obviously, in 10 minutes, we're not going to learn that much about it, but I hope to, in, uh, that you guys get a good idea of the advantages of such a language and then what BuckleScript, uh, but BuckleScript is and how it can help you in your JS project. So what the heck is OCaml? So OCaml is a lightweight functional language, um, functional programming language. It's not object oriented, but it's not purely functional either. It's this little bit of a hybrid from both, uh, but it's fueled by six basic data types. It's fueled by integers, uh, points, uh, point floats, uh, booleans, uh, lists, and arrays, but arrays are a little complicated. I won't get into that now. Um, but the main thing that uh, OCaml brings for us is that it has a powerful custom data type system. That means you're defining your own data types, and it's really flexible. There's really not re many limitations that come with that data type system. But we'll get way more into that in a later slide that talks about why that is the most helpful feature. It's also a language that relies heavily on recursion, everyone's favorite things. So loops, literally, no one really uses them. There's very few times where you'd ever use a loop in OCaml. Even things in JavaScript that were using loops and while wow loops and for loops everywhere, no, it's always done with recursion. Uh, and that's why when I was learning this for a long time, I didn't even know what a loop was. And when it got here and I started studying JavaScript, everyone's using loops. And I'm like, wow, this is exciting because this is so much easier. <laughs> but uh, then the final thing is that it's aggressively modular. Uh, what this means is that in JavaScript, we're used to defining things. And until the, uh, when we have ES6 and we have things like let, we kind of define things all throughout our program. It doesn't have to be necessarily in order. That will not happen in OCaml. Everything has to be defined in order. If you define a function and then you want to call it, but you're calling it above it, it will not compile. It will not run. And that leads me to my final point, that this is a safety first language. That means that when it compiles, it checks everything. Sometimes when you're running JavaScript, the compiler doesn't touch errors, and you're running it, and then you get a bunch of errors, and you're like, what is happening? And you have to go back and debug. Th these kind of things don't happen in OCaml, because when you compile, when I would copy and paste my code into the terminal, it will throw errors everywhere if something does not look right in terms of the data types or in terms of the structure. So there's a really important um, basis with OCaml and why it will help us when we see, learn about buckle script and what that does in JS. So really quick, I just want to show a quick demo of me coding this. If this yes, here we go. So right now, I'm, this is just going to be a quick video of when I code a simple reverse function for a list. So just think of a list as an array. But a list, you can't have adding access to indices. It's really frustrating, but it's just something that happens. So when you go through, uh, we always want to define recursive functions within another function, and this is to contain our scope. So here I just did my reverse function, and we always call the uh, recursive function visit, because you're visiting it multiple times as you go through. Have an accumulator, and you have whatever thing you're on currently. And then this match case is something really special to OCaml. Um, it's actually most developers, one of their favorite tools. It's almost like a switch, but it's, I think, in my opinion, more powerful than a switch. What it's doing here is it's taking current, and you're using a switch case method. So you're matching it with two different data types, either an empty list or a list with something in it. And H can kind of with T is the, uh, the um, what a list looks like within the OCaml switch case. So the powerful thing about this is that OCaml recognizes all possible uh, switch cases, and it will alert you. It actually won't let you compile this unless you have listed all the uh, possible cases. So if I ran this and I didn't put in that first line that says the empty list, it wouldn't let me run because it wants me to have a case where I actually get to an empty list. So it's a very safe language. It will make sure you always have everything covered. And it's also uh, extremely fast. 
So this is a couple of benchmark performances across a couple other similar languages, uh, F Sharp and especially Haxel, which is an extremely similar language. Uh, these are just two benchmarks uh, done with different modules. Uh, there's like a, you see a binary tree and a reverse complement. But you can see how much faster it is in these instances, especially like something like Haxel, which is usually its uh, closest cousin uh, language in functional programming. It's a lot faster because it is so lightweight. So then why do we use OCaml? I've talked about a little bit different, uh, some th components of why we use it, but the main thing is the strong static type system, uh, which is how it really knows data types and it knows what you're using them for and uh, the ability to use your own data types. Um, it's hybrid methods, which is the fact that it's not purely functional, but it's not purely object oriented. You get a little bit of both within there. And it's efficient implementation, so it's extremely fast and lightweight. So there's a lot of things that's not. It's not a robust system. It's not, it doesn't have like that classic object oriented that something like C has. Um, it's not universally known. I'm sure almost none of you knew what it was. Um, it's not supported very heavily. So we see things like Python and JavaScript have a lot of packages and it has a lot of updates to it. OCaml doesn't have that uh, base behind it. Uh, it's not easily flexible, so you can't do, get it to do a lot of things that you want. Even simple things, like a function has to return the same output all the time. Like if you have a function and you want to return an int, it can only ever ret return ints. Like you'll never be able to return maybe a string in some cases and an int in other cases. So it's pretty hard to grapple with in those cases. But the things that is, is it's fast, safe, and structurally intuitive. So that's why we want to use it in other projects, but how can it help us? So that's when we come to BuckleScript. So Bloomberg Technology created a uh, transpiler for o uh, OCaml in JavaScript projects called BuckleScript. Uh, it's a back-end OCaml compiler. So you actually input OCaml code, and it translates it to a JavaScript output. Um, and you actually get the advantages of the OCaml compiler when you're using it this way. That means you get that safety, and you get that, those lightweight features. It's actually really new. It was built in 2016 by Bloomberg engineers when they were working on a project and they were doing a lot of things where they were not doing runtime testing. They were compiling it and it was looking okay in their JavaScript projects and they built a massive project and they actually ended up having one or two errors that they could not figure out where it was and it, it was such a small error but it ended up costing them a lot of money and time because it wasn't checking when they were compiling. So they wanted to get that, um, some of those features within OCaml, including that run uh, that compile check. And that's why they created uh, BuckleScript. So here's just a little thing of what's happening in the background. This is a little GitHub uh, extension they made called Playground. And you can see here that on the left-hand side is the OCaml, and that's actually what I'm putting in to the, mach the machine. And then on the right hand side is a JavaScript that's outputting. It looks a little funky. It's not like how you'd actually write the JavaScript, but that's just because that's how it's becoming readable for the machine. And it exports that as a module. So it's mapping one OCaml input to one um, JavaScript output. And this is really commonly used when you're wanting to create data structures. Uh, on the right hand side is a JavaScript library called Immutable uh, made by Facebook. Uh, it's not really important what does it, uh, it makes data structures so they're more purely functional, a really like data in, data out kind of system. But on the left hand side is just a little buckle script um, implementation of that same thing. But the special thing is the buckle script compiles in a thousand milliseconds. The JavaScript, the pure JavaScript would compile in 4,000 milliseconds. So it's actually going, uh, it's taking only a quarter of the time that the regular JavaScript is doing. And the compile size is only 900 bytes versus the JavaScript, which is actually 55,000 bytes. And these are bytes in milliseconds, so very small things. But then you imagine that massive, large scale product, how much uh, an advantage something like this would serve. So in summary, uh, I've talked about a little bit how OCaml is a safe and fast uh, functional programming language. But you know, it's not the most universal product. You're not going to be building anything huge, massive scale with OCaml. But some developers were recognizing the advantages of having OCaml inside their projects, and they want to see how you could inject that into something like JavaScript. So that's when Bloomberg created that uh, buckle script. 
and were able to successfully use it in their JavaScript projects to cut down on runtime, cut down on errors, and cut down on size of products. So you're kind of getting the best of both worlds um, with this. Uh, and then to end off, I just want to talk about why people, a lot of people ask me why I actually learned OCaml in the first place. Uh, I learned it in school, and I was getting pretty frustrated one day, so I went up to my professor hoping for a really good answer of why he was teaching me OCaml. And because everyone around me is learning Java and Python and things you generally think are more helpful. And he turns to me, and I'm hoping for a profound answer, and he said, so you can't look up answers on Stack Overflow because there is no answers. So people then wonder why you learn OCaml in the first place. Well, this is one of the reasons is because it has such great features built within it, but also because um, how rigid and structured it is, it can really help you think about how you're programming and um, help you generally in that way as well. So multiple benefits. So that's all for my presentation. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me, but otherwise, thank you.